हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज प्रोफेसर धर्मेंद्र नारायण झा फैकल्टी डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ सी सागर इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ साइंस टेक्नोलॉजी एंड रिसर्च भोपाल टुडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट सपोर्ट वेक्टर मशीन व्हिच इज इंपॉर्टेंट कंसेप्ट ऑफ सॉफ्ट कंप्यूटिंग सो दिस टॉपिक नॉट ओनली जस्ट हैज अ सब्जेक्टिव टर्मिनोलॉजी बट मेनी रिसर्चर आर अप्लाइंग एस to various fields and getting genuine results and applications too so let's start machine learning can be divided into three types the first one is supervised learning second unsupervised learning third reinforced learning so why we are learning supervised learning along with svm the answer is svm comes under supervised learning where we have labeled data so this labeled data will work as a mentor or a guide for further learnings procedure so sub, uh, support vector machine svm comes under supervised learning that's why labeled training data used for classification and regression let's take an example to understand overall mechanism to recognize image we classify them into some category let's suppose we have few images or image patterns of let's suppose dogs and cats as training data so here we can categorize them in dog and cat classes in svm for modeling this training data is labeled as we are already understood because we know that svm is supervised learning so let's discuss the example overall support vector machine steps are the first step is model training second is prediction and the third one is output so firstly our model will get trained it will be able to predict the new data and further generate the output so let's take example new data suppose we have trained our system for image patterns of cats and dogs and if new data comes up then how it get uh, generate the result how it recognize the uh, the given image pattern so in the step 1 firstly labeled data training sorry firstly labeled training data sent to training model for learning so this is first step the new data of some random image of dog want to get recognized step 2 now system is ready to predict so in the step 2 when uh, the training is completed the prediction will started in step 3 the new data will passed to the prediction system system takes new data and classify that and in step 4 it recognizes system will output will recognized result so out will output will be generated and the given image pattern will be recognized as this is a dog so how do we decide it and what is hyperplane what is the role of hyperplane in support vector machine firstly we need to understand linearly separable data here as you got to know that we are already taken images of dogs and cats let's suppose we are having some circle and quadrilaterals as a as a two classes so the elements get separated by drawing a single line so linearly separable data got separated by plotting a line between two classes so data is separated now support vectors are what nearest element to hyperplane so before that we need to understand what is hyperplane actually let's take uh, an image where we are having some circles and quadrilaterals here you can see here and 
which line separates it you can see five lines drawn here and all the lines separates it perfectly in two classes the first one is circles and the second one is quadrilaterals but issues that which line take proper margin and covers el maximum elements so this is the issue uh, actually uh, multiple decision boundaries can be created here as we know that five lines are, have drawn already and these are no, these lines known as hyperplanes but which hyperplane suits better so we choose maximum margin and to decide that we will solve this problem like this among the elements the two classes is separated perfectly by this particular line with this angle and uh, the margins the minus d and plus d uh, we can say that negative hyperplane and positive hyperplane uh, margins decided and left over so when we calculate the maximum margin you can see here it is the addition of these two margins positive hyperplane and negative hyperplane so we understood that hyperplane is a line which divides perfectly divides both uh, the classes uh, and separates them along with the margins so another concept is support vector what are the support support vector here nearest elements to the hyperplane so this is the hyperplane and this is the distances margins to the hyperplane and which one is nearest to these lines and this line this element is nearest to this particular margin and this element is nearest to this particular margin so the plus d margin is this and minus d margin is this and these two are the support vectors because they are the line is going nearby to these elements so this these are the support vectors now we need to understand maximal margin hyperplane so as you can see the diagram the image and the two uh, image section uh, in, in uh, with a small margin and large margin the angle is important here if we draw a line with this particular angle it it may be uh, not covering all the elements all possible uh, elements and it will misclassify but if we see another image where this particular line covering all ma maximum possible elements so support vectors ca the count of support vectors are 1 2 3 4 4 uh, support vectors are possible here but in this case we can have only one and two support vectors so how we draw a hyperplane you got to know let's understand maximum margin hyperplane should be selected because this will produce better and more accurate result hyperplane angle will play an important role to find large margin with maximum width so you can see the width is greater than in comparison to this so we decide here we can see m2 is greater than m1 so m2 will be selected for modeling data or for better classification this will reduce misclassification with less or no error or we can say that less error rate next so as we understood linear separable da data but what happens when non-linear separable data comes in consideration so if data is mixed then it is difficult to categorize elements in classes by just simply drawing a line suppose we are having this arrangement the data is mixed together and we are not able to uh, you know draw a single line which isolate elements we divide elements into two classes this is not possible here if we draw a line it is not possible this hyperplane is misclassifying the elements so what happens when nonlinear data comes up in the consideration nonlinear data nature 
when elements are mixed and dividing line is not possible to be drawn this is the situation so what is the solution here we will solve this problem by kernel function so what exactly a kernel function is we need to understand further so rule of kernel function in solving problem with nonlinear svm so kernel function or kernel converts low dimensional feature space to high dimensional feature space then we can classify so in short we can see hdfs low uh, dimensional feature space and this is hdfs which is high dimensional feature space uh, then how we need to classify with the help of kernel let's suppose this is our actual problem thing and then uh, as you know it is 2d image and then when we apply this 2d ima image to kernel function it will generate a 3d image like this so you can see the pattern are clearly visible and we can draw a plane here a hyperplane here so this is how we solve problem of non-linear svm with kernel function now what are the application areas of svm let's understood understood it some of the real world application areas of of svm are the first is phase detection svm classify parts of the image as a face and non-face and create a square boundary around the face the second one text and hypertext categorization svms allow text and hypertext categorization for both inductive and transductive models they use training data to classify documents into different categories it categorizes on the basis of the score generated and then compares with the threshold value. The third, classification of images. SVM provides better search accuracy for image classification. It provides better accuracy in comparison to the traditional query based searching techniques. Bioinformatics. We use SVM for identifying the classification of genes patients on the basis of genes and other biological problems. The fifth one is handwriting recognition. We use SVM to recognize widely used handwritten characters. So you can see that in these uh, five domains, the variety is there and uh, patterns are there. And on that, on, on the basis of those patterns, we train system, we predict and we recognize things. So this is how SVM support vector machine works. Thank you for joining.